What's up? This is Dr. Taylor Crick, and I have a video about the TENS device. So if you're not familiar with our other videos about using a TENS device to stimulate the vagus nerve, first off, go and check out our other video. It's been really popular. It's got, I think, 35,000 views over the last year, and it teaches you how you can use a TENS device to stimulate your vagus nerve, clipping it on the outer ear. Today's update, I have an easier way to do it. So a very, very important new hack and new way to use the ear clips. So we're gonna get into that. This is gonna be a pretty short video, but check it out. Before we get into that, as always, I'm not gonna get into too much research today. We just wanna get into the updates, some frequently asked questions, uh, and some other things, but I always have to start with just some vagus reminders. So the value and the importance of the vagus nerve and of stimulating your vagus nerve. So in our other videos, I go through some studies and some research papers showing what vagus nerve stimulation does and also how transcutaneous vagus nerve stimulation has been shown to work. But the vagus just in general, vagal motor outflow is affected by many things and is connected with many things. So I, we're, we're seeing a lot of people using this like in the chronic fatigue world, the MECFS world, um, the benzodiazepine withdrawal world. And these are groups that have like, you know, big, big communities and forums and message boards. And so things like vagus nerve stimulation will, will spread through these communities. Or so MECFS, um, whatever other one I just said, oh, benzo withdrawal, and, and also like long COVID. So, you know, a lot of anxiety, just a lot of brain things, but it's the gut-brain connection. So 90% of the fibers uh, go actually from the gut to the brain to tell the brain what's happening. So that's what you're stimulating, the sensory stimulation um, uh, from the ear. But the fibers that go from the brain to the gut control stomach acid secretion, bile release, motility, and regulate a lot of those digestive functions. So you need good vagal motor outflow for that. Transcutaneous vagus nerve stimulation has been shown to decrease sympathetic dominance. So that's fight or flight. So again, a lot of people get stuck in that fight or flight mode, that stress mode. This helps shift you out of that. There's a study done uh, with fMRIs, so functional MRIs, where they did trans transcutaneous vagus nerve stimulation, put them in a functional MRI, and it showed decreased activity in limbic brain area. So limbic system dysfunction um, is just a really, really crazy thing that I have another video about. Um, but yeah, the vagus nerve stimulation decreases limbic activity. Vagus nerve stimulation is systemically anti-inflammatory. It's currently being studied for things like pain, depression, tinnitus, you know, a lot of different ongoing studies. It's an expanding field of research. And it can be negatively impacted by things like stress, just too much sympathetic activity. Things like medications, again, the benzos, other things that are ga uh, mess up with GABA or, or things that just, you know, affect the brain or even trigger, you know, this neuroinflammatory kind of mast cell activation and limbic system stuff. Um, viruses, like COVID, um, and inflammation just in general. And then here's one study. This is the only study that I'm going to share, but it just, again, highlights the importance. So when somebody gets COVID, what they found is that autonomic balance helps may determine the severity of their courses. But this says that one of the things we know is the cytokine storm. And it says the vaguely driven cholinergic anti-inflammatory pathway stops the action of NF-kappa B. That's what turns on inflammation. So vaguely activated cholinergic anti-inflammatory pathway stops inflammation. Says thus, well-balanced inflammation depends on adequate vagal signaling. Um, so that's basically it. Um, when you don't have good vagal signaling, you're going to have imbalanced immune response and you could have a hyperinflammatory response. Um, so yeah, you want good vagal motor outflow. And yeah. So here's the new thing. It's super, super cool. Uh, this is what it looks like first, you know, the finished product. And I'll show you some pictures. But this is our ear clips that we have, I hope you can see that. Um, and so the red and the black lead can now be used together and then just clips right on your ear and you don't need a muscle pad. So here's how you do it. So we sell the ear clips, you know, a lot of you, maybe if you're watching this, you've, you've purchased a TENS or purchased the ear clips from us and they come in a two pack. Um, so you take these two, these are the two originals. 
So this is what the ear clips look like when you get them. You have to cut them. So can you see the difference here? There's this long stick that makes it, you know, kind of a V. And what you're doing is cutting one of them so that it doesn't close all the way. So that's the original. Then you cut them. Then you super glue them together. And you're done. I mean, that's really it. What I did too is, you know, the super glue is kind of hard to hold. I, I wrapped it with something so that it dried. And then now that's it. They're done. And so then the red lead goes in one side. The black lead goes in the other. doesn't matter which one. And then it could be hooked onto your tragus. Or it could be also hooked onto your concha or simba concha or concha. Um, so different parts of the ear. If people have different shaped ears or if you know, you're putting on a kid that has a smaller ear or something like that, can be hooked onto different parts of the ear. So that's short, that's simple, but everybody that's ever tried this through our office, you, I recommend now switching from the muscle pad to this uh, modality or way of you know, applying this. Here's what it looks like when it's finished, the tens, the ear clips, yeah. So that's that. Here's a few helpful strategies. Because again, you know, we get a lot of comments, we get a lot of questions, and we don't, I don't know all the answers to this. You know, I don't like sell tens units and make YouTube videos about vagus nerve for a living. I have a, a practice in a clinic. This is just something that we found helpful for our, our, our clients and our patients. But so you want to use the left ear. I have some frequently asked questions in a sec. So you can use the concha, concha or the tragus. Um, both of those work. Anything in the inner ear. You can't use anything on like the outer rim of the ear. But I was describing this to a mom earlier and I said, if, you, if your ear was a pool, it's like the deep end. Like that's, that's where you, you can put it. Um, only on the left side though. Another strategy is to vary your frequency to avoid adaptation. And a special thanks to Dr. Sam Yannick. He's my mentor in this area. He's the one that, that I heard about this from. He's the one I heard about the vagus nerve stimulation from. He's the one that I heard about using the two clips from. Um, so this is, I, I learned this from him, but to avoid adaptation, your body gets used to things. So if you run five miles every day and that's just what you do, it's good, but it's better to do some cross training. So you can do like a week at 15 hertz, a week at 30 hertz, a week at 20 hertz, and you can just kind of vary that. We've typically said between 15 and 30 hertz, and you can just kind of play around with it. 15 feels different than 30. Um, I think most of the studies have used 30, so that's the other option is to just use 30 all the way through, but varying it, you know, uh, can, can give some additional uh, uh, stuff. You know, I didn't put this in here. Let me add one other. Um, Adding a supplement like acetylcholine support. Acetylcholine is the primary neurotransmitter of the vagus. And so if the vagus nerve stimulation doesn't seem like it's doing anything, adding acetylcholine support. So there's a particular product that I use called Acetyl CH. And so it, you can have not enough acetylcholine. And one of the reasons for that, you know, digressing now, but if you have a lot of mast cell activation or histamine type stuff, it's going to, H3 receptors in the brain are going to decrease acetylcholine. And so there's no amount of TENS that's going to stimulate that. You need that neurotransmitter support. But varying your frequency is another way to avoid that adaptation. If it's not working for you, add it an acetylcholine support and see what happens. And then the other one is combine it with other vagus activities. You know, don't do your vagus nerve stim while you're crossfitting. Do it while you can be deep breathing, while you're maybe meditating, while you're, you know, listening to binaural beats or, you know, you're kind of being peaceful. You don't want to try to push the brake while you're still pushing the gas. You want to be able to push the brake and, and slow down. Um, so deep breathing, gargling, gagging, uh, coffee in them and stimulate vagus, contrast showers stimulate vagus, you know, exercise stimulates vagus. But again, we don't want to be also stimulating the sympathetic as well. Um, so that's another strategy. Now, last slide, common questions that we get. You know, these are pretty basic and they're, you know, most of the questions are, uh, I don't know, simple. But why the left ear only? The right ear has... Uh, vagal connections to the heart. And, and there's, I've never heard of a single bad outcome. I've never heard of anything bad happening. But just because of the, that connection neurologically, we just avoid the right ear. What if my ear is a different shape? That's a tough one. I don't have an answer to. I think that the solution is this. Um, at least the next thing to try for a weird shaped ear or a small tragus or, you know, we hear that all the time or some people it's like the clip won't stay stuck on your ear. And I, again, I don't know. I'm not like 
I don't have every answer, but figure it out. First off, tie a rubber band around it. Um, I would try that to keep it clipped. Um, you know, you don't want to just like hold it on there with your hand all the time. What if I don't feel anything? First off, you might not be responding to it, and you could try the acetylcholine support. You could try the different frequencies. But a very, very simple thing is if I don't feel anything, if I turn up the frequency and I don't feel anything, I'll take it off and just lick my finger and wipe it, get a little bit wet. You know, sometimes they sell like a, the pads, they sell a gel for it. You don't need a gel, you just need a little bit of conduction, especially when it's dry and it's winter, you know, just a little bit of saliva will, will, will make a difference. Can you do it too much? Probably. It's like anything else, you could drink too much water and you could die. Um, so yeah, don't do it 24 hours a day. And if you get fatigued and things like that, you know, absolutely, you could probably do it too much, but I haven't, I haven't found that limit. I'm not really flirting with it either. Um, but yeah, you can do it too much and your body can get adapted and sensitized to it. So it doesn't need to be all the time, but it could be, you know, 15 minutes, three times a day. It could be 30 minutes, one time a day. There's a lot of wiggle room. So I don't think that anybody's really approaching like they're keeping it on all day or anything like that. And the last question is a really good one. Have you been able to measure the results? And for myself personally, no. And I, I, I don't really care either. I do track my heart rate variability. I don't track it, but I wear an aura ring. So I see my heart rate variability. But it's not like if on Tuesday night I do vagus nerve stim and on Wednesday night I don't. It's not like my heart rate variability is better. And, and so I'm not trying to measure it, but I see patients all the time. And so they're like, I love that TENS unit or it makes me feel so zen. Or I had an 89-year-old woman in it, and she said when she came in, she said, I'm 89. I know I have a lot of issues. I just wish that I could poop better. And so that's what we worked on. And she came in and she said, I just love that TENS unit. It's so easy. I can do it anywhere. And my poop is so perfectly formed. And, you know, maybe TMI. But to 89-year-olds, they don't care. Um, but so it, it, I, I hear the results. But no, I haven't been able to measure the results. And I think that in a lot of the studies, what they do is like, hey, do this for 30 days. And then let's check in with you with, you know, surveys but also some objective testing, some heart rate variability testing. There are studies that show objective changes, but that's not one of my goals. So no, personally, I have not been able to measure any objective results. I hear subjective results. Um, and I think that it's uh, inexpensive and non-invasive enough that even if somebody's not experiencing great results, it's, it's worth a try if it matches up with some of the things that we're trying to accomplish for them, like improved digestion, improved gut brain, a decreased inflammation, more well-balanced cytokine response, some of those things that we already went through. Um, so yeah, hope that's helpful. Super glue, ear clips. If you need a TENS, if you need an ear clip, we, we sell them. I mean, my gosh, I, we weren't even really, I don't think we were getting into this planning on selling them, but we just started getting so many requests for them and stuff, so we sent them all over the country. Um, so yeah, hope that helps. Um, and get a, get a set of ear clubs. And let me know what you think in, in the comments and things like that too. Um, yeah, that's it.